Hello, I'm Ads, and today I'm going to show you how I painted five different Necron Dynasty color schemes. I had a request on one of my videos by Hikax, Hikax Z, sorry to butcher your name, to do a Zarakan Dynasty color scheme video. Thank you, by the way, it's much appreciated. I have five in model spare, which made me think I could do five different dynasties here, so we're doing that. I'll be showing you the major differences from my usual Sautec stuff, so black gun casings will be the same as how I normally do them, green glows are the same, etc. You can check out my Necron Warrior video for how I do those, I'll link it in the top right for you. Let's get going with the Zarakan Dynasty first. As a general note, I just stripped back what little paint was on these boys already, so pardon the lack of smoothness on some of them, and sprayed all of the models with lead belcher spray, as it's a good starting point for a majority of these schemes. I'm starting with the underskeleton here first, which is why lead belch is a good colour to prime with. From the base, I throw an all over coat of black templar to the underskeleton, no need to be neat this way. I'm looking for black metallic look here, so staining with black templar instead of null oil seems the right way to go. I then roughly highlight the black metal with iron hand steel, just to help those areas read as silver again rather than as shimmery black. A last choice edge highlight of Stormhost Silver finishes the underskeleton off. Focus on the pistons and other parts that would be moving a lot, and for characters you should point highlight with this too. For that main brassy metal colour, I take Rune Lord Brass and block in all of the armoured sections, namely the chunkier plates on the limbs and the ribcage. This will take a couple coats to get smooth, so stick with it and try not to paint over onto the black metal areas. The heads and shoulder plates of Zarakan are a slightly different tone to the other brass sections, so I give these a couple coats of Canoptech Alloy. For the shade on the brass, I'm using Cryptek Armor Shade Gloss. I'd recommend using Agrax Earthshade or Reikland Flesh Shade instead, as I got through recording this and remembered they don't make this shade anymore, my bad on that. It's a shame really, there's not really any other colour like it that I know of. Slap your wash all over both the brass and platinum areas. I then had to recess shade with Wildwood, as gloss recesses look a little bit off. Not something you need to worry about if you don't have Cryptek Armor Shade, just letting you know what I'm doing. The box art shows the Zarakan with a gradient on the plates, so I'll try and replicate that by glazing Rune Lord Brass back onto the brass sections. This might only be worth doing for characters and HQ models if you're batch painting. Next I bring back the Canoptec alloy, and I'm using it in a couple ways here. I edge highlight the Rune Lord Brass sections to make them pop, and on the sections I based with Canoptech Alloy, I apply it as a relayer, bringing back the colour while leaving the recesses with the darker shade. <music> Lastly on the brass and platinum, I drop a highlight of Stormhouse Silver on the sharpest points. Again, for troops and such, this might not be worth doing, but for characters and bigger units, a little Stormhost will look great. Zarakan has white as an accent colour, so for the stripe on the Immortal's head here, I'll use the same white recipe I used in my Overlord video, which I'll link in the top right. For a quick rundown, I base with Celestra Grey, relayer with Ulthuan Grey, wash with Griff Charger Grey Contrast, relay with Ulthuan Grey again, and highlight with white ink. If you don't have Griff Charger Grey, some very watered down Drakenhof Nightshade will do the job. And that's the main differences. The cartouche is still black, just with the same platinum as the head and shoulders in place of the green. 
and the black parts of the gun casing and the green glow can be done the same way I've detailed on the channel before. I'll put a link in the top right if you need that recipe. Hope that helps Hikag, Hik, 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 Hikags, 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 sorry again. <laughs> Next we'll take a look at Nihilac. Nylac are mostly silver on the underskeleton and armor plates, so something like my Sautex scheme will work fine here. I went with Nuln Oil for the shade instead of doubling up with the Agrax just to differentiate them with my Sautex scheme. If you're painting warriors and want them grimy looking, you can use Agrax to give them that look if you want. As a quick note, I'm also using old formula washes here, I haven't upgraded my paints yet. I then dry brushed the whole mini with Necron Compound, an edge highlighted with Stormhose Silver, quick and easy. Nihilac are known for their gold and blue colours, so I'll start with the gold first. I base any areas I want gold with Retributor armour. I then washed the gold with Agrax Earthshade. For the higher up Necrons you might want to use Reikland Flash Shade or Gullum and Flash here instead to get a warmer gold, but that's up to you. I then relayed the gold with Retributor armor again to bring back that mid-tone gold but keeping the recesses dark. The last edge highlight of Liberator gold finishes it off nicely. For the blue areas I started with Araman blue for the base coat. You might need a couple layers to get a solid blue color over the silver here. I washed with Agrax Earthshade for the blue sections next. Ideally you could base the gold and blue areas at the same time before washing them, just to save on time. Like the gold areas, and then bring back the base colour, Araman Blue, and relayer these areas to bring back the colour. Then edge highlight them with Temple Guard Blue to finish them off. Now like our Dynasty I see freehand stripes on the most, so alternating the blues we've used over the gold and the golds over the blue, you can add stripes across the shoulder pads, heads and even the rib cages if you want to. The Immortals have this sculpted stripe which makes it easier, but you can see me painting one in on the shoulder here. Start with a single line of paint at the centre and widen it out on either side until you're happy. If you get a wobbly line, cut back in with the colour that you're painting over to fix your mistake. Then just highlight the edges and you've got a nice Necron racing stripe. Again, Nihilac have green for their glow and blade colours, so I painted those the same way I usually do, as well as black gun casings. Look sharp! Next I'm looking at Mefrit so we can see some different glow effects. Mefret are mostly silver with green accents, so starting from Lead Belcher and using the same process as the Nihilax scheme, I bring the model up to a shinier silver than my usual Sautec colours. For the green I've seen a desaturated colour used, more often than not Deathworld Forest and building up from that. I don't have Deathworld Forest though unfortunately, so I base the shoulders and head with the closest thing I have, Wire Flesh. I've seen people not paint the heads green so you can leave it silver if you'd like. I gave those areas a wash with Nuln Oil before bringing back Wire Flesh to relayer. I then edged these sections with War Boss Green to make them pop. On characters and vehicles you can go a step further and point highlight with Scarsnick Green for a last eye catch. Mm -hmm. 
For Mefret's distinctive orange glow, I kind of winged it using similar steps to how I do green glow, just using oranges I have instead. I decided on Fire Dragon Bright being the main colour, and grabbed a darker and brighter colour than that, namely Wild Rider Red and Luganath Orange in this case. I based the cables in with Wild Rider Red, then flooded the eye sockets and ribcage with a very thin layer. This took one or two layers to get opaque, so stick with it. I then thinned Fire Dragon Bright about 1 to 4 with Lamian Medium and brought the brighter orange onto the cables, dragging the brush to about the middle of the cable before taking it off the mini. I also repeated the ribcage step just over a smaller area and blocked in the eyes with a solid coat. Lastly I grabbed Luganath Orange and firstly dotted the eyes. I then repeated the glazing step on the cables, 1 to 4 with Medium and dragging to the centre just over a smaller area than last time. This turned out a little bit too pink for my liking, so I did a really thin glaze with the really yellow, practically just paint water and a smidge of yellow, and that's brought it to where I like it. And that's Mefret. It's nice to see a different colour glow on Necrons, and that bright orange is very striking. Speaking of different glows, let's have a look at Thoct next and doing a blue glow instead. So Thokt is one of those dynasties that you see a lot of variation on. They're commonly painted in the Tron colour schemes with striking blues on matte black armour. I'll not be doing that, going for a more cold black look. I started by painting the underskeleton with dark silvers. I washed the lead belcher base coat down with 3 or 4 washes of Nuln Oil, before bringing back lead belcher and highlighting with Ironbreaker. Again, this is the old formula Nuln Oil, not the new stuff. If you're using the newer formula you might need a few more layers than this, or use Basilicanum Grey instead, as it doesn't stain nearly as well. The armour plates are based with matte black. This is everything else except for the head. As a heads up, most of the Thoct I've seen online were entirely black, not with a dark metal underskeleton. I went with this just to keep some metallics on him, staying Necrony. Your call though, you can base entirely in black if you prefer. I gave these a highlight with Dark Reaper next. You can make this a thicker highlight, or for characters you can consider glazing this to add a hint of colour. A second highlight of Thunderhawk Blue comes next, thinner than the Dark Reaper one before it. A last drop of Fenrisian Grey at the corners will make the black jump on your characters. Thoct seem to universally have either grey or dark cream heads for their units, so I went with a base coat of Rakarth Flesh on my Immortal's head here. This was washed with Agrax Earthshade, relayed with a couple layers of well thinned Rakarth Flesh again to keep a gradient in the temples and cheekbones, and edge highlighted with Pallid Witch Flesh to finish. I wasn't sure how to go about the blue glow here, I've not quite nailed a recipe for a good looking glow yet. A bit of googling around pointed me to a gorgeous thought scheme by Sean Gibson at Glavin.net, so I started from there. He recommends basing the glowing areas with Kalidor Sky, which I have. He then mixes white into the blue 50-50 to relayer the areas and starting to bring the glow in, before introducing blue to white in about 10 to 1 ratio. He says putting a brush tip of blue into some white would do it just wanting a very pale blue. And that's Thoct. I actually really like the scheme, I think if I were to start over with Necrons this is the scheme I'd go with. Lastly, let's look at a niche scheme that just looks fun to do, the Ogdebek Dynasty. I'll be honest, I know nothing about Ogdebek, I just think the scheme is really neat. I don't paint much copper, so let's have a bit of fun. 
The Underskeleton I went with the same black metal look as Zarakan, so starting with Lead Belcher, washed with Black Templar, highlighted with Iron Hand Steel, and finished with Stormhose Silver. For the armor panels I based them with Screaming Bell before washing them down with Reikland Flesh Shade. These were then relayed with Screaming Bell and highlighted with Hashot Copper. I wasn't sure how to highlight copper from here, so I mixed some Stormhose Silver into the Hashot Copper, about 50-50, to get a brighter copper colour. For characters you could then point highlight them with pure Stormhose Silver if you want to. Having copper as your main colour for Necrons gives you some fun opportunities with weathering. Not only can you dirty it up, but copper oxidizes too, so adding some Nilac Oxide or well watered down Baharoth Blue in areas that would catch rain will make your Necrons really pop. Ogdebeck's secondary colour is green, and I'm using the same greens that I do with my Sautek here. I start by fully basing the shoulders and head with Caliban Green. No black base coat here, I want these to be quite vibrant by comparison. These areas are then washed with Null Oil before being brought back up with a relayer of Caliban Green, an edge highlight of Warpstone Glow, and a point highlight of Moot Green. And that's Ogdebeck. They don't seem to have an official glow colour, but I've seen the usual greens be used, so I went with those for mine. So that's that, that's how I'd paint these five dynasties. I hope that's helpful to those looking for alternative Necron colour schemes. It's a nice change of pace being able to paint outside of Sautech, but I'm ready to get back to it. Thanks for watching, good luck with your colour schemes, and I'll see you again soon.